Hello YouTube, this is Painter for Hire 1975 with you. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to paint a bust. Um, there's all kinds of different ways to go about it, so I'm going to show you the way that I know how to do it. Um, I'm not, this is my first video, so bear with me. Uh, I might not speak as clearly or, or whatnot, but basically um, I'm going to just really try and show you how to paint uh, a bust. Um, okay, for this tutorial I'm using a Gentle Giant Han Solo. This was a pre-painted bust, but what I decided, I did not like the paint job when I took it out of the box. So basically I just primed over it with uh, gray primer. There are several different brands of primer on the market. Um, I suggest Duplicolor from, uh, from Duplicolor basically, filler primer. A lot of people, um, like this primer and a lot of people haven't tried it so if you haven't tried it I suggest you know get out and get a can you can get it at your local auto parts store um, it's really good primer I, I like it because it's the, it's the I like Tamiya primer and it's the closest thing that's affordable that replicates that so with that being said let's get on to painting alright what you do is I use artist acrylics I mix my flesh tones with a basic recipe of raw sienna, burnt sienna, and white. Um, I generally use a little bit more burnt sienna than than you should because I like my stuff a little darker. So once you got the color loaded in your airbrush, turn your compressor on. Now you take and you just, all you do is you just want to just feather it on, like, like so. If you see, you see that it's just getting a little bit of color. You don't want to concentrate the airbrush in one area, or you'll get what is called runs. Just anywhere there's going to be skin, just lightly get that. Some people prefer to work to work uh, light to dark. I, for the other hand, I like to work dark to light. So that's already starting to look, you know, like good flesh. And, and like I said, anywhere it's gonna be flesh, you get the hand. Don't worry about it if you get it on something else, like the jacket, because right now we're just concentrating on the flesh. Turn the kit in all different directions to make sure to make sure you get everything there. I just saw a spot that I missed inside the coat. For this part, we're just going to concentrate on the flesh. Like I said, I'm not too sure how many parts I'm gonna. This video is gonna be in. Like I said, I'm new to making videos, but you just want to just get, you know, your your flesh tones. One mistake that some painters make is when they're painting, they forget to look go underneath the chin and the nostrils because when they're when they're painting they think that once they get the neck they think that they got that but if you don't turn the kit in the direction you're not going to get that particular color uh, and in this video I'm going to show you some tricks that I've learned that will make your your paint job come to life a lot better like I said, this is already starting to look good. I mean, I wish I would have done a before what the piece looked like before. But if you, you know, if the camera could see, I mean, you know, look at the uh, at the skin. I mean, it's it's 
a lot better than it was. This particular piece was, um, it was really, really pale. And that's something that uh, a lot of statue companies, they have, is, you know, their, their, their skin tones are really pale or really yellow looking, like jaundice color. And, and that's not good. That's not, that's not good, because it's not good, healthy skin. You know, no one's skin's really yellowish. You know? So you just want to make sure you get in all the crevices. I always... I always give it a couple more coats. I'm going to give it about... I'd say no more than three. I usually do two. Because, you know, once you, uh start laying the layers on, it's going to look different. Like I said, this is my first video, so hopefully everybody can see what I'm doing here. I'll try and walk you through what I'm doing if, if I feel the camera's not picking up on it. Basically, what I'm doing now is I'm just going over what I've already started, just because I want to get a nice good crisp uh, surface to start painting on. This, I'm being very serious. I first started painting figures 12, 13 years ago and um, I was really distraught when I first started. I couldn't do it. And then I just started practicing and then eventually I got really good. And then I got people wanting me to have them, you know, I got so good, I got people wanting me to paint stuff for them and everything. So this is a good, a good piece to, like, uh, this is a good piece to, like, practice on. So if you have, like, a statue or something that you really don't care about, or you could even go to the dime store and pick up, like, like a statue of, of something, of some type that you don't spend a lot of money on it, just practice on it. Because that's all it really is, is practice. Once you learn the technique. Okay, now that we got our uh, base tone down, um, take this original color of raw sienna, white, and burnt sienna, and add a little bit more raw sienna and white to it. And, as you can see, I'm taking, and I'm just going over the highlighted areas, the raised areas, like such as the cheeks, the forehead. You just want to be really subtle with it. Oh yeah, one thing I did forget to mention, um, this technique that I'm using if you're, you have to have a double action airbrush to achieve it. You cannot really do it without a double action. Um, if you can, if, I don't know if the video can see this, but as I'm, I'm taking and I'm raising, I'm just hitting, you know, just the raised areas, you know, getting the fingers anywhere that where the light will capture naturally. You hit the top of the knuckles just real lightly. Just want to be light about it. get the chin. Collarbone muscles. Chest. Anywhere you feel the light is going to touch the figure naturally. Alright. Now I'm just lightly going over what I've already done. Um, 
I personally, I use an Iwata Eclipse airbrush with a smaller needle to make it go down to a 3.5. Um, another airbrush that's good is Sotar 2020. You can get by with those, um, but I've all I tried the Sotar out. It's it's good. I just I just kept going back to the Iwata Eclipse. Mainly reason for that is, is uh, like I said, the Sotar is good, but the Iwata is a lot easier to clean. You know, so. Sometimes you might get a little something on top of the bottom of your airbrush and you need to pull it off. That's happen sometimes. Not sure if the video is coming, but, but if you can, you can look in the hand and if you can look in the face, you can see the where where I took and painted the high spots, and you know you can really you can really see it starting to come together now. Um, and this is you know we got one more layer to go, and then you know, but this is already starting to come together nicely. Um, one thing I like about busts is you can, they are really, they're small, and most of them are affordable, but they're, like I said, they're small pieces, and you can just, uh, they're a lot easier to store in your cabinet or whatever than painting a big, large scale figure. I also do one one scale bust. Um, I'll, I'll post a video about that on another time, but um, painting these figures, it's a lot of fun. Um, for me, it's a good, uh, it's a good release of tension for me, you know, relaxes me to paint. Um, I've always been a fan of painting, been a fan of art ever since I was a kid. But you can really see this is starting to come together now. Hopefully the uh, camera can pick up on this. 